Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another airbrushing for the beginner. Now today's video is about textures, how to get textures down, stencils, shields, masking products. I'm going to give you a run through of all these little products that will help you out when you're doing your piece of artwork for the first time and you see a piece of artwork and there's all these like fancy textures and you think how on earth do I get these effects down with an airbrush or these sharp edges or the shapes on some of these like pieces of art you see them really nice sharp crisp how do i get it and you think oh, i've got to get it all by the airbrush you've not there's all these little tricks that you can use guys to help you get your artwork down so we'll start off with some textures now i'll run through the ones that i use to date and have used in my career and still use today and i've got a little handful that i use and they always come in handy they're nice and cheap you can pick these up you've probably got some of these actual items knocking around your house and you don't realize that you've got them but you can use these things for textures so first off kitchen towel I know it sounds really weird, but you can use kitchen towel, you can scrunch it, you can dab your paint to create textures. You can tear kitchen towel to give you an edge that you can put up to your work and spray along and it give you that nice sort of jagged edge. So kitchen towel is one you can use for textures. Nice and cheap, that can be used. Insides of pillowcases, you get the internal material, which is like this. And this is great for soft edges when you spray up against. If you're doing like clouds on backgrounds and things like that, and you want that nice fluffy soft edge, this stuff is brilliant to use, guys. As I say, nice and cheap. You've probably got an old pillow in your house. You can just rip the internals out and you've got some of this. Give it a try. Put your paint across it and you'll get the nice soft cloud edges. So that's a good one to use. Textures like this one. I've used this in some of my videos. Now these were, this is like a plasticky, like a rubbery plastic with like a webbing. And this one's good for textures like on clothing, things like that. Just look at the texture in your artwork and just find a piece that looks similar. Spray through it or to the edge of it and you'll see how these objects can make these textures in artwork. So that's another one, these were placemats that were like four for a pound from like a cheap shop. I just seen it and thought that would make a nice texture stencil. So I've got that one. Another one which is good is the grip stuff that you use under carpets. And this is a square, just looks like little squares. This one's great for doing carbon fiber. If you want to create a carbon fiber texture, use this, do a black base coat and then drop the silver lay this down spray silver paint through and then slightly move your square pattern slightly off and then spray again and you get a perfect carbon fiber effect with that rolls of this are nice and cheap about two or three pounds for a roll of this that comes in really handy guys for using as textures stencils and things like that or even if you're i've used this when i'm polishing and denibbing a panel lay it on your table, masking tape it to your table, and it grips your panel so your panel don't slip. So it comes in really, really handy, this stuff. So I'd recommend that one. That's the grippy. You usually, you usually see this in like cupboard linings or for under carpets and things like that. So there's that one. You've got Scotch Bright. Now, if you're into painting, you'd be using these for keying your surfaces up. These are another great one for textures because you can pull parts of this away, spray through it and you can get some really cool textures with a Scotch Bright. so that's that one. And the last one that I use is wire. Now, get a thick gauge wire, strip the plastic off it, pull the strands out so you've got the strands showing like that. And this one is great for hair textures. You can bend the wire on your piece of artwork 
and you can spray through and it gives you them real nice crisp hair textures. So that's another little cheap one that I use. So they're the texture ones that I'll basically go to. They'll adapt for mainly all of your artwork. Them ones there are my go-to for textures in portraits or if I want to put a bit of carbon fiber down, I use that one. But they're the main ones that I'll be using. Now, moving on to shields and things like that, like stencils, you can buy loads of stencils. You can get eBay, Amazon, and we're gonna move on to like the Maylair, it's called, like the plastic, the flexible plastic. You can spray on this and then you can like get a solvent and you can wipe your paint off to keep your stencils clean. Now I've got one here that I picked up from Hobbycraft. This is for a job that I did and this is like a fleur de lis pattern, like a flower one. So you get these in sort of a six inch square, you can get bigger ones. And these are great for doing I use some of this on like some low rider artwork where you place it on and spray through. Just make sure you mask off the area when you use these because you can get overspray and you'll get straight edges. If you're aiming just to get the center piece of your art, just make sure you mask off the surrounding when you use these ones. These are great. You can get these eBay, Amazon. Just type in stencils and you'll see a lot of these ones come up. So we've got like a Fleur de Lis one there. I've used that quite a few times. I've got a checker plate stencil, which is a two part. As you can see, this has been chopped up and chewed up over the years, but works great. I've had this for years and it still works. And this is how you'll get the metal checker plate effect. So there is that one that you can use. Now to make your own ones of these, I've got a piece of like the Maylair here, which is just a clear. You can get your design across to this, like trace through, say, or print something and then lay that over the top and you can cut it out with a scalpel. It's a little bit tricky to do, but if you need something like to get you out the trouble sort of thing in your artwork, you need to make a shape, you can cut this stuff quite easily with a scalpel. So that's the scalpel that I recommend is a Swan Morton with the 10A blades. They work really well and the blades last quite long guys in these. They're a brilliant scalpel. So one of them for cutting this sort of melee stuff is ideal. More onto the shields. You've got the, I do swear by these, you've got the Pocket K, um, Pocket Graphics by Scott McKay. These are miniatures. Now you can buy these. I'll leave a link in the description where you can buy a tin. You get these in a little fancy tin, which is really nice. And these are miniature graphics. Now you've got your screw heads, you've got little bullet holes, curves, different shapes. And these come in really, really handy when you're doing small intricate pieces on artwork where you need some real sharp lines and edges. You can use these with the curves. You've got miniature circle ones, little stars, rivets different shapes, little tears. So these are really good. You've got a flower on there as well. There is an actual review on the channel actually on this set where you'll see me spray with these as well. But they are really handy guys. These little pocket graphics, nice and easy and they store in the metal tin. And I've just dropped a magnet to the back and I could just stick that to the easel, job done. So they're really handy for little graphics. Then moving on to some real old ones, but these have been an absolute godsend. I would rec recommend a set of these to any beginner is a set of the True Fire stencils because you can use the curves on these in all your artwork. Especially I use these on portrait work. I've got these main two that I've chopped down and these two are my go-to for portraits when I'm doing portraits as shields, holding them up and getting sharp edges especially around jaw lines, around the mouth, around the nose edges, all around the eyes. These two, even though they look absolutely battered, they work brilliantly and they have done for years. So that's like a true fire set you can get quite cheap. There'll be some in the link that I'll leave you to a website and they do a lot of stencils and things if you just search through the website, but they are a godsend. So that's the sort of bits you can get on some textures. I've got some bits behind me here. Now these are, I got given these by a good friend. 
This set is being an absolute godsend as well. These are all circular shields, like for getting circles. I've got the full set going from really small and they go the ovals all the way up to the circles. So I've got these, which are behind me here. So they're like the flexible molar ones. And then you can get the rigid ones like this. I don't tend to use these so much. You get the French curbs, which are handy again. You can spray against cheap to buy a set of French curves, but they come in handy guys. They really do for holding up and doing some nice spray outs on these. So they're handy to have a set of French curves. And then you can buy these ones, which are the, the numbers text ones. I don't really use these. Um, you can get these in different fonts. I find these to be a little bit sort of fiddlet because they're so close together. When you're working with these, it's a little bit awkward, so I don't tend to use these so much, but I'll show you and guide you another way for your text, which is better than using these, but you can get these if you get on with these. So there's them. We've got some more circle ones there, which are more rigid. They come in handy. These ones are worth getting, guys, which are these ones. WH Smith's um, online, you can get these a few pounds, but they come in handy for the circles, especially if you're doing rivets and you want to do some bigger rivets or small rivets, or you need some circles for your artwork to spray through. But again, mask off, get some masking tape and just mask off the opposite pieces that you need. As you can see, I've been working around this sort of size, and that's mainly for when I do rivets. I gauge it on this one from a rivets and then just mask off the other and just shield it off so you don't get any overspray going through on your work. So that's some of them ones. Now, moving on to, if you want text, I'd advise uh, a cutter plotter, like a silhouette cutter plotter that you can plug into your laptop. They work really well and they will cut out things like this. So I've got a T5 Vespa sticker there. I've got a Shoe racing lid one there. I've got some Harley Davidson ones which are all pre-cut. A Ford Duratec. Now this is all work that's gone on in the past and I've had spare ones that are just spare. Now this actual stuff that I'm showing you now is a vinyl. So you get a backing and you get a thin sheet of vinyl like that. Now I get my vinyl stuff cut from the sign shop where I used to work. So any artwork or text that I need, I can just pop in and get it cut. Now, when you weed this out, it will be cut sort of like this on here. And you weed out the letters. So you have to pick out the letters like that. So that's the D off there. You just sort of weed it out with your scalpel, weed that out. And then you get a transfer paper, as you can see the white on there. This transfer paper goes over the top of the actual vinyl. So it's like this. And then you would stick that to your panel, take the backing off, stick it to your panel, and then you pull the white piece on the face of here. You pull that away and it leaves your vinyl transfer on your panel and then you can mask around it and spray. So that is a good one. If you've not got the access to your own silhouette cutter or plotter, local sign shop, go down there. They're usually more than helpful to cut you some little graphics out. It's not expensive to get done. So that's the vinyl sort of way you can go down it. You can make your own, <clears throat> again, you can actually buy transfer tape, which I would recommend every airbrusher to buy, which is this white paper here, which is on top of the actual vinyl. You can buy rolls of this, and it is brilliant stuff, guys. I use it all the time, because you can pencil draw on this. So you can have a piece of this transfer paper over a bike tank, and then you can draw on top of that very lightly and you can scalpel it nice and clean and you can make your own stencils as you go along. It is brilliant stuff, works an absolute treat. You can get the clear version of it as well, which is this one here. This one's mainly used for 
transferring graphics across in the sign industry when you're doing double layer stencils or text if you've got a solid color of text and you want a drop shadow you'd use a clear transfer tape for your drop shadow so when you peel it off the back end and go to put it up against your solid text you can see through it that's why this one's clear and you can locate it and apply it and put your drop shadow on but that one does work well as well for dropping artwork across like text onto a panel or something like that because you can see through and you can just guide it in so that's a good one to get clear definitely recommend the transfer paper i'll leave a link to where i'll leave a link to where i can basically find it as cheap as possible for you to get a roll of transfer paper you get it in different sizes but well worth having guys for an airbrush shot it really is so that's a little bit on things for textures these are the pieces that i use and what you see on the table this is what i always use and this has been with me and use these methods i've used these for years and they work guys they really do all these little bits have all served their purpose in my artwork along along my career and i still use it now a lot of these are some of these are old methods but i always think the old methods are the best because they work your masking tapes you can use masking tape get your two inch masking you can lay that down on your panel draw on top of masking tape because you can pencil or biro on top of that and you can cut it out again with a scalpel so there's some easy ways you can pre-cut and make your own stencils again cardboard make your own shields just cut some random shapes out and you can hold them and use cardboard shields nice and cheap you've got the main layer one again you can use that cut it for shields so they're the little handy tips for you guys on shields textures different vinyl applications it all works so i hope you enjoyed this little video it will help you out guys these little bits here they really will don't get stressed about how do i get textures there's some great ones there that work across the board for your pieces of artwork so i hope you enjoyed this video don't forget if you're new to the channel click that subscribe press that notification and i will see you in tomorrow's video where we're going to be cracking on with some lambretta bits they're going to be thursday and friday and then i've got the portrait for you guys where i'll take you through a black and gray scale portrait I'm going to show you a little bit of paint mixing get you a little set mix up of paint we'll be doing some textures and things and i'll show you some textures with some of the bits that are here we'll be using shields so all these little bits that you see in this video they're going to come to play in the up and coming videos guys so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one